It's very important for me to know what you guys want to see, especially now that I'm only doing one video per week on Saturdays. So I conducted a poll asking you guys which company you wanted to see next. 61% of you guys said you wanted to see Coursera. So today we're going to look at the Coursera IPO that is happening on March 31st, 2021. Coursera is partners with more than 200 leading universities and companies to bring flexible, affordable, job-relevant online learning to individuals and organizations worldwide. So if you want to learn more about the company and the products, keep watching. Also, stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to go over the company's financial data to help you decide if you should buy or pass. What's going on investors? My name is Jose and welcome back to Rico Suave at IPOs, the best place to learn about new companies going public and how to invest in them. Today, we're going to look at the upcoming Coursera IPO. I got to tell you guys, I'm very excited about this one. Founded in 2011, Coursera has grown to more than 77 million registered learners, over 2,000 organizations, 4,000 academic institutions, and 300 entities that have used the platform to upskill and reskill their employees employees, students, and citizens. According to Capital.com, the company is expecting to issue around 15 million shares during this IPO with a price range of $30 to $33 per share. This will give the company a valuation of $4 billion. According to the Chronicle of Higher Education, colleges in the U.S. lost $183 billion between March and December of 2020 due to pandemic-related expenses, revenue loss, and public funding cuts. With everyone locked down at home and looking for online courses and new career opportunities, Coursera was able to fill in the void. With more than 30.2 million joining the platform in 2020, which represents a 65% year-on-year growth. Coursera ranks number four on the CNBC's Disruptor 50 list. Now here's a few snippets of an interview that the Coursera CEO gave to CNBC a few days ago. But before that, a quick shout out to my patrons. Your generosity and contributions allow me to do what I love to do and keep the channel growing. So thank you. If you want to become a patron, there's a link in the description. Um, so Jeff, tell us what has been the impact of COVID on demand for classes and degrees at Coursera? Well, it's been considerable. UNESCO tracks the number of school closures due to COVID. As of April 20th, 1.6 billion students from kindergarten to college had their school shut. And even as the school shut down, people went online to start learning. So we've seen individuals coming to Coursera 500% year-on-year increases from the mid-March period to now. They're learning data science, computer science. They're taking personal wellness classes. And so we've really seen a tremendous uh, spike from individual learners and also from universities who are trying to move their teaching online but often don't have the resources to do that. Uh, we've had a million students enroll over 5 million enrollments and over 13 million hours of learning. That's on the student side. But the next wave after the school closures really is unemployment. We saw that coming. And so we said, let's do Coursera for government for free through the end of the year so that any national, state, or local government can offer our partners courses at no cost to unemployed people impacted by COVID uh, through the end of the year. And so far, we have seen a lot of interest. We are now activated at more than 150 countries and um, 225 US states are using this. And it really is 3,800 courses in computer science, data science, job skilling, career search uh, courses that are available to help people get reskilled during this downtime. But for, for most industries, professional services, financial services, uh, manufacturing, we are seeing a redoubling of efforts to accelerate what some people call digital transformation. This is the idea that across businesses, the ability to use data to make better decisions, the ability to move software into the cloud so they can have more efficient cloud computing, the ability to create digital experiences for their customers and to do sales and digital marketing to find their customers, as well as using digital you know, data and, and computing to make better, more efficient supply chain operations decisions. Really, digital transformation is happening around the world in every industry. And I think, frankly, uh, higher education is about to really undergo 
their experience with digital transformation in the coming months and years ahead. Um, are there lessons that have been learned in the years ahead of this pandemic that you're now applying to be able to help them avoid things like digital burnout? Yeah, well, you know, one of the analogies I like to use is that um, building online learning from the ground up to be online is a lot different than putting a Zoom camera in front of a lecturer. Uh, doing that is similar mm. to going to a drama like a play and just like video recording a play and calling it a movie. Movies have special uh, techniques. They have soundtracks. They have cutscenes. There's a way to design a movie where a movie is not just a recorded play. Similarly, there's a way to design online learning so that it's not just a camera on a lecturer. It really has a lot to do with why the learner is there in the first place. If you think about the amount of learning that happens on YouTube, it's massive. Not everybody finishes every YouTube video. Not every individual finishes every Coursera course. But if the courses help you get something that you want to get, usually it's a credential, it might be a college degree, might be a certificate, might be a job, completion rates are much higher. One of the great examples of this is the states are much higher. One of the great examples of this is the state of New York partnered with Johns Hopkins University. This is a free course. It's five hours of long. It's only been available for four, uh, four weeks. We've already had 400,000 enrollments wow. and the completion rates are above 30%, sometimes 50% because people are looking for jobs. As you can see, when schools shut down, people flocked to online classes. Uh, during the lockdowns, universities wanted to move their courses online and Coursera was happy to oblige. Coursera also partnered up with government agencies to offer online courses at no cost to unemployed people impacted by the pandemic. The CEO believes that higher education universities are going to be moving towards a more online learning environment. Coursera is specifically designed to make the online learning effective and efficient. Overall, it's just an amazing company, guys. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the description below for a video that is called Welcome to Coursera, if you want to see how the company works and how the platform works. You can check out their website if you want to learn more about their products. They have unlimited access to 3,000 plus courses, guided projects, specializations, and professional certificates. You can learn from 170 plus leading universities and companies with Coursera Plus, including Duke, Stanford, and Penn State. You can try Coursera Plus for only $399 per year. Now let's look at the S1 to learn more about the company's financial data. This S1 was filed on March 5th, 2021. The company is showing a total revenue of $293 million. Their net loss is $66 million. Their cash and cash equivalents were $79.8 million. Total assets were $417 million with $177 million in total liabilities. So. Should you invest in the Coursera IPO? Well, I really like this company, guys. They have taken advantage of challenging times and have worked very hard to accommodate those who couldn't, you know, continue their education in, you know, in a more traditional way. They have been doing this for a while now and have become very efficient at it. I'm gonna have to give this one a big thumbs up, guys. Even though they have a net loss, they are still growing and I can't think of any other uh, competitors right now that will bring these well-known universities to you at home for suspicion. But of course, guys, that's just my opinion and I'm not a financial advisor and this is not investing or financial advice. So make sure you do your own research and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. As always, guys, if you like this video, make sure you drop a like, subscribe to the channel. But more important than that, guys, make sure you take care of yourselves and I'll see you soon. I bring up the pain, Rick is always the mind. I make the micro rain like acid rain And the best investment channel you ever known, y'all I take your girl, your house, your money, leave you broke, son